Hey guys, I want to applaud you for watching this extra video that I made, um, kind of just to get you ready for that quiz tomorrow on factoring and factoring uh, or solving by factoring. So one of the questions that often comes up is how do you study for a math quiz? This is one way. You know, try some practice problems off of previous assignments or examples, or you can even Google some, and just see if you're going to get the correct answer using what you already know. So here are some practice problems that I would make sure that I know how to do for tomorrow. So just make sure that you are pausing the video right now, and I would suggest that you try them on your own first. And then if you need to watch the process that we go through to get these answers, that's fine. But if you just want to fast forward and check your work to make sure that you're understanding what's going on or that you have the right answer, that's great too. So go ahead and pause the video now and work these out on a piece of paper and see what you can come up with. So if you're going to continue to watch here, um, you're going to be factoring on this quiz, and you're also going to factor and solve. So factoring here, if we take a look back, we are going to go ahead and just break these things apart. There are four basic ways to factor. First way is by greatest common factor. That's what I would do here. There are only two terms, and I see that they both have an x in common. So I would divide that x out, leaving me with 3x plus 2y. That is greatest common factoring, where you take something common out of all terms. When you have four pieces, you would go ahead and stick them in the four boxes that we've been working with, and then pull out a greatest common factor from each row or column. And then you write your final factors as those things that are on the outside of our squares. And these are the two factors that would multiply to make that given expression. Now, when you have three pieces, our goal is to turn it into four terms. This is what the AC method is for. You take the A times the C, so the 1 times negative 60. What multiplies to make negative 60 and would add to make positive 4? There are lots of ways to multiply, by, or multiply to make negative 60. Oh, so many. Hey, negative 6. 10. I'm trying to find the ones that add to make 4. Once I determine who they are, then I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a four-term problem and place these pieces into the boxes and go ahead and repeat what I did when I factored by grouping. So your final answer here would be x minus 6, x plus 10. Now, the next example right here, you're going to go ahead and use difference of perfect squares because there are clues in this problem, like the 25, he's a perfect square. So when you split him apart, it's just going to be x plus 5, x minus 5 as his two factors. One's positive and one's negative because I need him to multiply to make a negative 25. When you factor, these are what your end answers look like. They're just broken apart. Now, when you use factoring to solve, that's when you go ahead and do that same process. But in the end, you set your answers equal to 0 and find the solutions to that x variable or what that x equals in that equation. So again, factor, by sol or factor and solving. AC method looks like I'm going to use here. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. What multiplies to make negative 6 and adds to make negative 1? negative 3 and 2. Go ahead and put them in the squares. 2x squared minus 3. The a and the c say the same. Then these are the two from my list. And I'm going to pull something out from each row and column. 2x minus 3, x plus 1. And then to solve, I set them equal to 0. That means each piece is equal to 0. And then I'll add the 3. x equals 3 over 2. And then I'll subtract the 1. Two solutions for every problem. OK, last one here. I see that I don't have three terms. I only have two. I'm also noticing that 8's not a perfect square. So I can't use that pattern, but they do have something in common. This is a greatest common factoring problem. I can divide a 4 and an x out of both of those pieces, leaving me with x minus 2. 
So when I do that and now I need to solve, I set each piece equal to zero just like I normally would do. So this x minus 2 gets set equal to 0, x would equal 2, and the 4x that's out in front, even though he's not in parentheses, he's still a part of this expression, so he needs to be set equal to 0, divide by 4, 0 divided by 4 is still 0, so I still get two solutions. So be thinking about that. When you factor and solve, you take your pieces and set them equal to zero and solve for those x's. Okay, if you can work through or have worked through these problems, you should be good to go for that quiz tomorrow. Thank you for watching.